What is up everybody? It's me Anthony here to talk to you guys about another TV series and I know it's been a while. There hasn't been really a lot of stuff for me that I actually wanted to talk about. I mean yeah there was Parasite and there's a Fallout series but I feel like everybody and their mom on YouTube was talking about that and I wanted to talk about something a little bit more underground, a little bit more niche. And I think we have found that TV series. This is under the bridge. Now this is a true crime story adapted into a TV series but was first adapted into a book by Rebecca Godfrey and it follows the real story and tragic death of 14 year old Rena Verk and it's a really sad and powerful story and with the first episode showing and letting us know what kind of tone that this show is going to be going in I think that this adaptation is in good hands and that is saying something for true crime stories because sometimes, you know, you get lifetime true crime stories and they really do a really disgusting job of romanticizing some of the elements of these true crime stories. But in this one, so far at least, I'm only one episode in, this one looks like it's really taking care of the source material and the real people involved in this and portraying it in a really good light. And I know it's kind of weird to say a really good light when it's something so tragic as this true story, but I'm really intrigued with this series and it kind of almost makes me feel like I don't know what's going to happen, even though if you read just a little bit of the story, you kind of know where things end up, but the how we get there is really interesting. So if you are new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe because we're on our way to 3000 subscribers. And if this is your first time watching any videos that I had on this channel, go check out the series that I did, Constellation. That was a fun time trying to figure out what the heck was going on with that series. But as always, I'm gonna give you guys my recap of the episode. Then we're gonna talk about my review, how I thought about the episode. And then we're gonna go into theory section. And if you're new to me doing this, well, Get used to it, because we're going to be here all night. So without further ado, let's get into episode one of Under the Bridge, The Looking Glass. The episode starts off with a voiceover by Rebecca, who talks about how fairy tales always portray little girls as innocent and that they're the ones that need protecting. But in this story, it is the girls that we need protecting from. Right off the bat, when I saw this intro, I just got chills and it really sets the tone going forward in the series, at least I hope so. And after watching this first episode, if you don't feel some type of way, man, you might want to go see the doctors because I think you, you got no soul. We then flash back to November 1997 and we meet Rena Vick, who is picked up after school by her uncle who surprises her with the newest Biggie Small CD. And side note, the soundtrack in this series is top notch. During the drive, Rita says to her uncle that she is looking for Josephine and her uncle suggests instead of hanging out with the Seven Oak girls that Rena should focus on her family instead. Upset by this, Rena gets out of the car and makes her way to the Seven Oaks homeless youth facility where she meets up with her friend Dusty and the two of them go into Josephine's room. Josephine and the other girls decide to party at Connor Field's house and Josephine tells Rena that she is not invited. Once Josephine Josephine and the other girls are gone, Rena takes Josephine's notebook with her back to her house so she can get revenge on Josephine. We are then properly introduced to Rebecca, an author from New York who used to live in the area. She returns to her home to write a book about the girls who live there. Back at home, Rena starts going through Josephine's notebook and starts to call all the numbers in it and spread rumors about Josephine. At Connor Field's house, Josephine asks Connor for some weed and Connor says that he heard that she had AIDS and that she had had abortions. Josephine asks who told him this and he says that it was Raina. During dinner, Raina gets a call from Josephine inviting her out so she leaves her family and goes to the party. Once at the party, Raina figures out that she was set up and starts to run away. Josephine and a large group of girls chase after her and eventually catch her and take her under the bridge to beat her up. A few days later, Rena's father and uncle go to the police station to report Rena's missing. The cops don't take their claims seriously, but one cop, but one cop, Cam Bentland, sympathizes with Rena's family and agrees to help. Rebecca goes to Seven Oaks to talk to the girls there so that she can get some information for her book but the headmistress there says that she doesn't have time for her and tells her to leave. Rebecca tells Josephine and Dusty that she is writing a book about misunderstood girls in Victoria 
and leaves her card for the girls to call her if they want to talk. Josephine reads the card and sees that Rebecca is from New York and takes her into her room to talk. Josephine talks about how she likes Al Capone and Mafia stuff and she wants to be in the Mafia when she is older. Yeah, because... This kid isn't crazy enough. Rebecca smokes with the girls and asks her about the girl Raina, but the girls awkwardly say that they don't know anything about her and try to move past the topic. Cam then visits Connor Fields and asks him about Raina's whereabouts, and Connor says that the group of girls took her under the bridge and beat her up, and that a rumor is going around that her body is floating in the river somewhere. Cam goes back to her adoptive father, who is the captain of the police, with the new information that she has gathered from Connor Field and asks him for a diving team to investigate the river. Cam's father agrees, but says if this turns out to be nothing, that her neck will be on the line. After searching the river, Cam and her team find Raina's clothes and bring Josephine and her friends in for questioning. At the police station, Josephine calls her mother, but her mother is in no shape to come and get her and Cam asks if she has no one else that she can call, and Josephine smiles as Rebecca gets a call from Josephine. Rebecca comes down to the police station and sees Cam, but quickly avoids her and gets taken to see Josephine. Cam gets a call from her brother to take a look at the CCTV footage of the night that Rena was attacked, and in the footage, it shows that Rena survived. Rebecca finally meets up with Josephine, and Josephine asks her if she can keep a secret. And then the episode ends. So that is the end of the first episode of Under the Bridge. And I know I kind of went through the recap a little bit fast and you're kind of thinking like, well, I don't think anything really happened, but you have to see the episode for yourself. Because even though that you can explain this or recap this in a couple of bullet points, you just have to be there and experience the quietness and just the surrounding and the tone and the setting of the show. Because there's a lot of scenes with no dialogue and they just want to see the the characters' expressions on their face. And that tells a whole other story that we can add on to this. And uh, we're gonna talk about a little bit of that stuff in the theory section. So if you, you can't wait, just go to that. It's gonna be timestamp in the video. But as far as my review for the first episode of Under the Bridge, I really enjoyed this one. I was coming into it a little hesitant. I even did a poll on my YouTube community tab and I asked you guys, are you gonna watch it? <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of you said no. So I was kind of like, uh, should I even talk about this? But I said, hey, you know, I want to check it out. And I'm glad I did. And I'm making videos for it. So if you are one of those people that said you didn't want to watch it, um, sorry. Um, we're we're going to be talking about it on the channel. <laughs> Everybody in this show acted perfectly. I think the acting in the show is like top tier. They're doing a really convincing job, at least for me, for seeing that these high school age girls are terrifying. And if you've been in high school, um, you can know that uh, high schoolers can be pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> so um, I, luckily I wasn't in a situation like this uh, where I knew anybody that could possibly kill somebody. Uh, but these girls really do a good job of portraying like pretty much a little tiny psychopaths. And you really get scared at some points, it's particularly with the Josephine character. She is chilling. Uh, <laughs> dang. But if you checked out the first episode of Under the Bridge, let me know in the comments down below. Do you think that Josephine is, uh, the actress that's playing Josephine, is scary as hell? Because I do. <laughs> let me know in the comments down below. But now we're going to get into my favorite part of the video, and that is the theory section, where I just talk about some things that I had on my mind and just explain them and try to figure out what they mean. So the first thing that I want to talk about is something that I didn't really touch upon on my recap, and that is Rena's family. Um, we get a little bit of information and backstory about Rena's family. We know that they're now like converting to a different religion so they can conform in the new town that they are in. And I think Rena is having trouble with that. I mean, she already looks different in this town that pretty much everybody looks the same and she's trying to fit in and then they're changing religion. So it can be a really tough time for Rena and her family. But there is a scene in here during the time when Rena is is missing for a couple of days where Rena's mother gets a call and on the other end of that phone, someone is asking, where's Rena? Do you know where Rena is? And they kind of sound distressed and kind of worried. And, and in my head, the first thought, I was like, well, wait, they know where Raina is, right? Because they did something to her. But if you watch the end of the episode, 
it shows that Reyna is alive at that moment. So maybe the girls don't know what happened to Reyna after they beat her up. So that's very interesting. But who was behind the call? Who called Reyna's mom? I think it was Dusty because in the show, you can see that Dusty and Reyna kind of have a bond. They kind of have a friendship. It looks like, it kind of looks like Dusty is Reyna's only friend in the town. Maybe it's because, you know, two brown girls, you know, they can relate <laughs> and try to fit into this uh, town. But I do think that Dusty is the one that called Reyna's mom and asked where she was because I think she legit was worried about her. Kind of weird way to go about, you know, showing that you're you know, uh, like your friend and loving your friend uh, after beating her up. But uh, hey, the next thing I want to talk about is Rebecca and Cam. Now, why did Rebecca avoid Cam during the time when she went to the police station to go see Josephine? I think this one is pretty obvious. If you caught the whole thing that Rebecca was talking about when she went to the youth, uh, the troubled youth center, she said that her and her friend used to be there. And I think her friend who she's talking about is Cam. And I think something happened, a fallout between them where they, she doesn't want to see Cam. <laughs> she doesn't want to relive those past traumas. And I thought it was also kind of funny because that moment when she sees Cam and goes to the other police officer and says, hey, uh, can I go somewhere else? Cause I don't want to go there. <laughs> Essentially, it kind of reminds me of every time when I go out and I'm going to like the grocery store and I see somebody from high school or from work or something like that. And I'm like, I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to see anything. I got to get out of here. But let me know if you think that Cam and Rebecca are friends or were friends at one point. They definitely know each other. So let me know in the comments down below what you think their relationship is. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the secret that Josephine said that she wanted to tell Rebecca. What is it? Uh, I think that she knows more about what happened to Reyna at the end after they fought. I think maybe Josephine is the reason why Reyna is dead, but they are really building up Josephine as the main villain of this show. But you know, I wouldn't put it past her because I mean, her group is called CMC, you know, Crips Mafia Club. I, I don't know why any little girl or any kid is, during that time would want to do that. But again, let me know what you think your theories are in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Check out all the other videos that I got on here for some other shows. We're going to be talking about Under the Bridge and I, I can't wait. So remember guys, keep watching.